So this room was going to be the DIY room where I do a bunch of projects, PC built and whatever on my other channel, Total Commando, which is the third channel actually. But this time it's going to be a 3D printing room. And right now what I'm printing on all these printers, all four of them, is the Benchy model. And that model is this thing right here, if you guys don't know. And that's pretty much the benchmark that I'm trying to print out. But what makes this special is not that we are printing with three different CR10 3D printers, which is the Mini, the CR10 Standard upgraded version, and the enlarged version with the 400 by 400 by 400 build plate, which is huge. I will get to building stuff that is much larger that will occupy most of the space here eventually. But right now I'm doing a benchmark and I'm trying to figure out and get all these guys set up and ready for a printing session for the next upcoming weeks. But what makes it special right now is I'm printing with a bunch of different materials that I have received thanks to GearBest. I thought of an idea, I was like, we have a bunch of printers, why not go ahead and test out and see if these 3D printing filaments from GearBest, the cheap ones that mostly range around $30, are worth their money and how they perform. Well, here we are. We have a bunch of different printers printing at the same time. And once these guys are done printing, I'll show you guys the results and we'll talk about it. So first of all, what we have here is not too special, but what is new is that we have a bunch of different brands, the Sunlu, the Tronxy, uh, Amaze3D, Anet brand, and a bunch of different ones here. But this time we have ABS, which is nice, and we're gonna be testing that out on the CR10s. And we have some gold, we have some ABS yellow, and the usual stuff that we had in the previous videos, Amaze3D and the Anet brands with standard PLA filament. But that is not where the cool stuff is right here. The cool stuff is what's being printed right now. Let's take a look at this one first. Here we have PLA wooden filament. Yes, that is wooden filament being printed on a printer. You can print wood. In my hand, I have two models that I printed out last night with the wooden filament, and they turned out great. They feel great. They feel like wood. They look like wood, and they actually look pretty awesome. And I did test this wooden filament by burning a piece of filament, and it did smell like wood or paper that is burnt, which is really cool. So right now, again, we are printing benches on all of them right here. That is the wooden filament, all right. And then what we have here is a Tronic C transparent filament. Once again, pretty awesome, and so far it's actually turning out quite well. Over here we have the Anet A8, which I had a lot of trouble calibrating and getting it to work again, but I said, why not, let's go ahead and have it print once again. And then, finally, we have flexible green filament. And that is where things get really interesting because when I tried to print it out, it turned into a flip-flop, a total flip-flop. I mean, it looks like a flip-flop and it pretty much flopped. I mean, it's flexible. So, it uh, was printing too fast. I searched online and apparently got to print it slowly. So now we are printing it at 10 millimeters per second, which is ultra slow. And all of these are being printed at 0.2 millimeter height and 100% infill. So, this is the flexible filament, it's green, and we are printing it, and so far, with these settings, it looks pretty dang good. So yeah, very excited to see how these are going to turn out, but anyways, I'll catch you guys in just a bit here when these guys are done. So, see you guys on the review table. Alright, so we have a bunch of benches right here printed out, and they are all mostly PLA filaments. Um, we got the wooden, we got the transparent, and the flexible. And we got a couple of different samples of the special type of filaments. And we're going to be checking out and testing them out and showing you guys what they look like. So let's get right into it. So first of all, I want to update you guys on what's happening with the CR10 situation right here. So Gibber sent me the CR10 printers to review and currently I am still struggling with the bed issue. If you guys don't know, if you're new to the CR10, it's a fantastic printer. Just one thing is that they send you a warp tempered glass printing bed. And you can easily replace that. Some companies don't even include a glass bed, they just give you the plate itself with a bunch of tape on it and that's it. They do include a tempered glass, which is nice, it's solid, but it's warped. And I had that issue initially with the original CR10 standard edition, and that one I spent a good two weeks trying to figure out what is going on, and eventually I found out and confirmed multiple times that the bed was warped. So I just went to Ikea, and luckily I found myself a cheap square mirror that I could use. And after I installed that mirror, I had no issues whatsoever, I've calibrated it only once, and that's it. It was smooth selling from there on end, but so yeah, be prepared to replace your printer bed glass. You can go to IKEA and grab one, you can go to a hardware store. All you really need is a piece of glass or mirror that fits your bed. So the original one I have put away. Now we have the regular upgraded version, we have the enlarged version, and the mini version of the CR10. And all three of them, and I really hope I didn't have to do with this again, 
but all of them had warped glass. So that's where we are right now. Luckily, I bought two of those mirrors from Ikea when I bought the original one. So for the most part, I can get the 300 by 300 standard upgraded version um, ready to work. For the other ones, it's gonna be really hard. There are companies on Amazon that do sell them, and the CR10 enlarged, that's a 400 by 400 piece of glass that I have to replace. Or I have to find a way to keep the glass from warping by somehow taping it around the corners so the bed levels out itself but I did that and now it's out of calibration. But for now it seems like the mini is the popular printer so, so we are going to be fixing the mini version of the printer first. Anyways, uh, enough talk, let's get right into the filaments here and see what they are. I will have a dedicated video about these filaments once I have more samples and everything. Nothing about the printer, it's just going to be about the filaments themselves. But these ones were all printed with CR10s except for this one right here, I'll just take that out. That was printed with my broken and then fixed and then broken and fixed and broken and fixed ANET A8 and um, yeah, that's, don't worry about that one. Okay, so here we have a PLA black. Um, I just wanted to print this one out and see what it looks like. Ignore the defects, that's because of the calibration. And I was actually using the old version of Cura right now. This black filament actually has kind of a matte texture, which I do like. I will be printing the one with the MH3D brand that I got off Amazon, which is also PLA black. And that one has more of a shiny look to it, which I also do like, but we'll compare that later. Then we have the golden filament. I know it kind of looks like yellow, but it does have that golden vibe, which is cool but nothing really to see here. And then we have uh, red, which is printed on the original CR10, not the upgraded version, and a lot of stringing, which is an issue I had on pretty much all of my prints. Uh, it's just a settings issue. Right now I have fixed settings and I have my settings properly set. And one last thing I wanna show you guys before we get into the cool stuff right here, and that would be this thing right here. This is something that I recommend you print out as soon as you get your printer, and that would be a dial grip. This will make your painful process of calibrating your printer in the corners much much easier i mean you could do this with one thumb and it's so easy such a breeze to actually adjust and calibrate your printer with this so i recommend printing this out for the mini as well as the standard but not for the upgraded version the upgraded version you want a smaller one but i'll talk about that later on anyways so here are the cool filaments that we have here and um this is what we have so we have the transparent these are transparent right here then we have the wooden so this is all wooden and then we have the flexible and that's all flexible so really cool filaments and I was really excited about these guys and I was not disappointed by the quality and overall looks and feel and texture and everything about these. Let's go ahead and get started with the flexible filament. Um, so here we have the Benchy and all these stringing right here is easily taken out. You can easily clip it out. It's not too embedded in there, but overall, if you take a look at this, the print quality is actually really, really good. You can see the color is different right here. There was red filament before this, but you can see how clean it is and overall i really like this so let's do a quick stretch test so you can see this is a benchy check this out <laughs> so that is pretty cool and um it's not gonna rip it's really strong so i'm putting full force on this trying to hold this down and trying to rip it open and you can see that nothing is happening so that is really impressive and you can see that it comes back to exactly where it was so this is something that you can actually definitely print a phone case with it the tpu kind of cases and you'll have a phone case that just scratch your phone and will actually last and protect your phone unlike printing with PLA or ABS. So really cool. And yeah, on this one, I didn't cut any of the stringing so you can see what we have here. But overall, definitely a fantastic print. Here's a closer up. You can see what kind of detail we have here. Very, very impressive, especially for a first time print. Believe it or not, this actually, no, actually this was a second time print. First print was this one where I printed it with regular settings and I tried to see what would happen. And yeah, so as you would expect, it's just a bunch of mess, a lot of stringing, and the filament wasn't exiting the extruder fast enough. So it's a big mess. And this is what prompted me to make a flip-flop, which I did print out right here. I was like, this looks like a flip-flop. It was a flop. Let's go print an actual flip-flop. And then, yeah, you can see how good this filament is. It's fantastic. And it's pretty affordable. The thing is, you don't get as much of it as you would on a regular PLA spool. With a regular standard PLA spool, you'd get a one kilogram or a thousand grams. But with this one, I can't remember. I'll put it right here. So yeah, once again, very impressive. Um, these were pretty much the first time settings. So after I failed, I searched online and I read online and someone said that 10 millimeters is the way to go when printing flexible filament. So I did that and I increased the temperature to 240. And this was the first print. It came out fantastic. I mean, this is the first print. I didn't even have to tweak anything and it came out this good. So really proud of that, really happy about that and really happy about this filament. It's, I would say it's definitely worth it, but I can't exactly remember how much it was. So 
that's the flexible filament. And just in case, I did bring some of the filament here and you can see what it looks like and how flexible it is. So you can see I'm putting full force on it and it's not breaking, it is stretching. This is absolutely monstrous. Ah, man, I mean, this is slipping. I am trying my absolute best to rip this open and it's not, it's just sliding on my fingers. And you can see what happened to my fingers. This filament is absolutely monstrous. It's strong and yeah, I would say this filament can take a real beating and it's not gonna do anything. I mean, I pulled really hard on it and it did not break. And then we have the wooden filament and this is where things once again get really exciting and I absolutely love the wooden filament here. So I was like, okay, wood, let me print something more wooden. So I started out with a barrel right here. Once again, it looks great. The thing is about the wooden filament is the looks and how the way light reacts to it just screams wood. It feels nice. It looks like an actual prop. I really love how this looks and how every print I printed out with the wooden filament looked like. And you can just absolutely see, there are traces of wood in this. No, it is not completely wood. It's some kind of wood or paper that is infused with PLA, but overall, I can confirm that it does have some kind of wood or paper. Because I did go ahead and burn a filament piece and it did smell like wood afterwards, or burnt paper. Then I went ahead and printed out the Benchy right here, which once again looks great. And with the Benchy, it kind of reminds me of a clay model. It feels like, and it looks like this was made out of clay and you can just see the texture of it and you have a feel of kind of a fiber more organic kind of model as if it was made of some kind of clay you know handmade but it's not it's just printed out um yeah the texture and everything about this looks great now of course this can be improved but overall it is a really nice print so here's what the flip-flop looks like I also printed the flip-flop and you can see how the detail looks like i don't know what happened here but it it's pretty good i gotta say and the best part is this stuff actually smells like caramel or something. It smells good. <laughs> I gotta say, it smells good. And even days after printing, it does still have that smell, which I really like. There's a close-up of everything here. So yeah. And once again, I did bring some of the filament sample right here so you can take a look at it. It feels rough and it's pretty brittle. In some areas, it just snaps just like that. But yeah, that's what it looks like. And the last exciting filament that we have here is the transparent filament. So this, I believe, is the Tronxy brand and I have to do a really close up of it and kind of put my hand around it to show you guys what it looks like. But yeah, it's actually transparent and you can pretty much see what it looks like when it is printed at 100%. And everything else here is transparent. Now, of course, it's not gonna be absolutely transparent. It's not ice. It's 3D printed in layers. So of course, that's how it's gonna look like. And um, yeah, let's take a closer look here. So yeah, that's what it looks like. You can see how the detail is. It's not bad. And uh, there's kind of variation in the middle here. I'm not too sure why. Most likely, again, that is because of my calibration and the printer not being calibrated. And I'm using an old piece of software. I'll be fixing all of that and updating you guys in the future video once I do get a proper bed. Calibrating and updating everything. But that's what the bench looks like. Nothing special. Um, we'll be shining lights through all of them here in just a bit. Here's a little pixel squid. And uh, let's see if you can see the detail on there. It kind of looks like an icicle but you can see the detail on there. Pretty hard to actually see, but from the side profile, you can tell that it is kind of pixelated. So that's cool. And then here we have a transparent piece that I cut off from this bulb, which I will show you guys what I'm talking about here. This was actually right here. And I printed this bulb because I actually want to do something really cool and useful with it. And I'll show you guys in just a bit here, but, but yeah, here's what the filament looks like when it is about a layer or two or three thick. That's what it looks like. So that's one kind of transparency you can expect from it. So pretty good. Of course, you can get it better and change the pattern of what it looks like, but that's how it is. So we got green filament behind here, get some wood, but that's that. And finally, here's the light bulb that I wanted to show you guys. This is a light bulb model that I found on Thingiverse that I wanted to print out. It was meant for an LED project, but I went ahead and printed it out for this torch light that I have here. It's pretty powerful. It's a Cree T6, I believe, and it's perfect. So I can kind of heat up the area here and push it in and then tape it around but this looks pretty awesome. So let me turn off the lights and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so here we have the bulb and the light itself, and you can see what it looks like. It's pretty transparent and you can get light through it and you can actually make something pretty useful out of it. The thickness on this wall is probably 1.2 millimeters and it does a great job at diffusing light overall. So if the power does go out, I have a nice kind of a bulb that I can lay around and use. And these flashlights actually use a 18650 battery. So, and this is a fantastic way to light up a small room or washroom. So yeah, I really like this, but let me show you guys what it looks like if we light up something else like the Benchy right here. So that's the Benchy and here we are. Once again, it lights up fairly well. Let me zoom in on that and get less light in the camera. Um, 
yeah, there you go. So pretty, pretty cool. And one last thing, here's what the light looks like without anything on it. And then here's what it looks like with that piece of filament that I had ripped out from the bulb. So you can see the diffusion. So yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So I'm still calibrating the CR10 printers and we have some cool filaments to play around with and show you guys in a future video uh, what kind of stuff you can do with this and if it's still worth the filament and how they hold up. So far, I'm really happy about these filaments. Totally worth getting because usually you just get a different color of PLA. Usually when you're starting out, you just get a bunch of different colors of PLA filament. But when you have transparent, wooden or flexible, that's a whole different story. It's really enjoyable to play around with. Uh, one thing I do want to say, this is a sample of the transparent filament. Uh, here's what it looks like. It's hard plastic, so it's just like PLA. But feeding the woolen filament is actually pretty hard. You kind of just really have to feed it slowly by hand manually until you get to the end and then you can let the printer do its thing. It's kind of a tight fit or more like the texture here is kind of rough. So it's kind of gripping onto the Bowden tube. But with the flexible filament, you also have to feed it manually, but it's definitely not as hard as the wooden because you just kind of push it here, no force needed. Eventually you'll get it in there. And just print it at a speed of 10 millimeters per second and you're all good with a temperature of 240, which is what I've done. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you have anything you want me to test out or print out or test with these filaments, let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Take care, everyone.